The Holly Sniper 2 EFI system is highly regarded for its user-friendly design, self-tuning capabilities, and the ability to deliver precise fuel control across a wide variety of engines. Its straightforward interface and smart learning features have made it the go-to choice for engine builders, tuners, and hands-on automotive enthusiasts. But even with all this advanced tech, some easy to overlook mistakes can trip up even the most seasoned do-it-yourselfers leading to headaches and unnecessary troubleshooting. In this video, we're gonna break down the most common mistakes people make installing their Sniper 2 so you can avoid the pitfalls and get the best experience from your setup. Let's kick things off with a step too many people brush aside. First on the list is not reading or following the setup or installation instructions. Skipping or misunderstanding Holly's setup and installation manual is the root cause of many errors, even for experienced installers. We also have YouTube videos you can look at, but that doesn't mean skip the instructions. Make it a point to review every single step, and if there's something you don't understand, don't hesitate to look for help. Moving on, one of the most critical steps is wiring. Proper main power and ground are a make or break for any EFI system. Despite being repeated countless times, it can't be overstated. Always run your power and ground directly to the battery, not a fuse panel, not a starter solenoid. The battery doesn't just supply power, it also protects your ECU by dampening voltage spikes and eliminating electrical noise from other components. By going straight to the battery, you give your Sniper 2 the most stable, cleanest power possible. You avoid the risk of voltage drops, electrical resistance, and unstable grounds that can develop with age and corrosion elsewhere in the system. Get this step wrong and you risk overheating, damaging relays, or burning out fuel pumps down the road. When routing wires, make sure to keep away from heat sources, sharp edges, and moving parts. Use zip ties and Adele clamps to keep everything secure and tidy. Next on the list, don't underestimate the importance of fuel pump grounding. A rusty or painted surface isn't a good ground. Always use bare, solid metal on the chassis, not flimsy sheet metal, to keep resistance low and your system dependable. O2 sensor placement is another spot that trips people up. If it isn't installed at least six to eight inches after the header merge, and if there's leaks or improper angles, you're gonna get false readings that throw your tune off, potentially flooding your engine or damaging the sensor. When it comes to the angle, aim for a sweet spot that's neither straight in from the top, sides, nor bottom half of the pipe. A good rule of thumb is to mount the O2 sensor in a 45 degree angle, that takes the guesswork out of it. If you're visualizing the pipe like a clock face, think of the sensor placement between 1.30 and 2 o'clock. This will give you the optimal position. There can't be any leaks before or after the sensor. And if you're planning to dump the exhaust, give it at least 24 inches after the sensor. Clogged or failing injectors can act like a tuning glitch but are usually revealed under load. If your ride stumbles under acceleration but cruises fine, remove the air filter and visually inspect your injector spray patterns. To prevent issues with your injectors in the first place, it's crucial to ensure your fuel system is clean and free of debris. When installing your Holly Sniper 2 system, always use the included pre and post fuel filters. Additionally, take the time to properly flush your fuel lines by connecting them together and flushing into a gas can, which will help prevent debris and installation related foreign objects from entering the sniper system. This simple step can go a long way in ensuring optimal performance and preventing potential issues down the road. Another critical aspect of the Sniper 2 installation is fuel pump mounting. Electric inline fuel pumps are designed to push fuel, not pull it. So their placement is crucial for optimal performance. This is especially critical when pulling fuel from the top of the tank through a factory sending unit. The pump will be working hard from this configuration. 
The fuel pump must be mounted even or below the bottom of the tank to function correctly. Mounting the pump above the tank can lead to decreased efficiency, overheating, and erratic fuel pressure. Also, don't bottleneck the flow with 90 degree fittings. Any other type of restriction before the pump may cause issues leading to premature failure. If you can't achieve this mounting configuration, it's best to explore other options such as an internal fuel pump. Setting your timing just by feel or just in the software isn't enough. Always use a timing light to verify base timing. If what you set in the Sniper 2 doesn't match what's really happening, performance will suffer and troubleshooting will get confusing fast. Vacuum leaks often go unnoticed but are a major cause of high idling or poor idling in general. Make sure all vacuum ports are properly capped with fresh, new rubber caps. They're prone to cracking and cause sneaky vacuum leaks. Keep an eye out for other potential leaks, including the throttle body to intake manifold seal, intake gaskets, faulty fittings, and cracked or weathered vacuum hoses. An often overlooked step is adjusting the IAC or the idle air control. It must be adjusted after installation and with the motor up to temperature. This crucial step ensures smooth operation and optimal performance. To set the idle correctly, follow the procedure outlined in the manual. With the engine above 170 degrees Fahrenheit, open the initial startup gauge screen, adjust the idle screw until the IAC position reads between 2% and 10%. Keep an eye on the TPS value, ensuring it stays at 0% and recalibrate if necessary. Don't skip this step. It's essential for fine-tuning your Sniper 2 system and achieving the best possible performance. Finally, never use non-O2 safe sealants or fuel additives. Certain chemicals can destroy the wideband O2 sensor fast, causing the ECU to chase phantom problems with the fuel delivery. Consistent maintenance, checking wiring, data logging, and monitoring sensor health round out your best practices for a hassle-free Sniper 2 experience. Remember, most mistakes come from rushing installations or skipping technical instructions. So take your time, follow every detail, and solve problems methodically. If you want more in-depth guidance or tech support, head on over to holly.com. You'll find expert tech tips, community forums, and resources that'll help you get the best out of your Holly 2 Sniper system. Happy wrenching.